Hey, my pros, pros, pros. Crystal here from Elite Hair Care USA. So my client here traveled a couple hours to come and get a haircut and an alopecia weave. Want to see how it looked? Stay tuned. <laughs> So to start the process, you guys, we went ahead and cut her hair down. And I know a lot of you are getting a little bit of anxiety from this. Trigger warning, I mean, it is what it is, you guys. She decided that now is the time for a change and she no longer wanted to be salt and pepper either. So like I said, to start the process, I went ahead and did a preliminary cut. Now she does have a lot of balding and thinning in her crown area and in some parts of the sides and the back, but we are gonna go ahead and disguise all of that today. And at the same time on her sides, she actually has no hair on her sideburns area and also near her temple. So we started out by relaxing her hair, which of course you guys have seen me do relaxer after relaxer, okay? now. Looking at her hair, it is green, yellow, it is a million different colors, which that was expected because we did do a relaxer. But at the same time, I know that we're going to be doing a color today. So that was another reason why it didn't bother me that her hair had turned greenish slash yellow. Now, if this does happen to you and you don't plan on doing color before you go to the chair is when you want to go ahead and start toning out that brassiness by using our Voila Purple Toning Shampoo. And that is going to eliminate all of that yellowing that you have going on and create more of a pearlescent look. Now, because she's actually going to go dark brown, I'm actually going to be adding a little bit of red semi-permanent color to the dark brown color to help to diffuse the fact that later on it could potentially turn green when it starts to fade. And to also create a base for this white hair that she has, which you need a neutral base so that the hair itself does not become more of a high, high brown versus a dark brown. So adding that red and also using a neutral brown is going to alleviate her hair looking very warm and keeping it nice and cool. Now, if you're new here, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and please don't forget to also thumbs up this video and share it with your family and friends. Now, while we're adding on her color, I just wanted to remind you guys that today is officially the final day of our 50% off Easter sale, as well as our $7 serum sale. And we've added our curl defining gel to the $7 sale. So the curl defining gel is also $7 today only. Now I'm starting the process to protect her crown area because we are going to cover that area up and then we're gonna go under the dryer and she's going to dry for us to put on the next layer of protection. Now, I always say this in all my videos and I'm gonna keep saying it, you guys, just because she's thinning or balding, that does not mean that I'm not going to do my absolute best and protect that area. Protection is super important, especially because at the end of the day, she does still have very much so live follicles in that area. And if you don't protect that area, hmm, best believe you're going to end up doing more damage than good. Once she dried under the dryer, I did off camera add the other two layers of protection, which is what you guys see up there. She also has a net on top. This net is very lightweight. It's really there to make sure that if she perspires, that her hair lasts or she gets a little more longevity with the actual install. So the net is the last step of the process and the net gives the extension something to bind to rather than it binding to the silicone or to the end papers. It's going to actually bind to the net. So if she does perspire or she gets a little bit of um, humidity buildup in there or any wetness up there, it doesn't immediately start to slide or start to loosen up.
So now we have gotten down to the meat and potatoes of this process. I like to close my clients off a little further back. Mind you, because when you think of a regular shortcut, regular shortcuts are actually closed out or curled from almost between the crown and the occipital bone. So I mimic that just as though I would if it was her actual hair doing a pixie style. This is where a lot of the magic happens as well because blending is super important, especially when you're trying to involve her hair with the extension hair. This is when you want to use your razor. This is also when you wanna use your advanced cutting techniques such as notching or slicing. This is where all of the work really comes in and also the placement of the tracks. You guys notice that when I place my tracks, I'm very strategic with how I place them because I know that I'm setting my foundation so that when it's time for me to curl her, style her, blend her, it is all going to fall into place as though it was just her natural head of hair that started to grow out. Now keep in mind, you guys, even though the hair is short, it is still gonna have a little bulkiness to it. So I like to use my razor comb and to just go and comb it and razor it at the same time, but keep it nice and soft. You don't want it to have hard lines. You don't want it to have a lot of those hard sheer lines. If you are using your shears, I highly recommend doing the notching technique or slicing. But honestly, the razor is the easiest way to blend, especially for my alopecia weaving clients because it really makes my job super easy. It takes a lot of the work out and I'm able to thin the hair out without worrying about cutting too much. To carve out her sideburns, I'm just using my clippers. Now the clippers is another good way to get a lot of that bulkiness out as well. Keep in mind when you do use the clippers, you can't be super heavy handed because they cut a lot faster than a razor does. And at the same time, when I do use the clippers, I'm using it more just to get the shape. I don't really use it so much on the extensions because it has the ability to give those hard lines. And then once you get those lines, it's very hard to soften it up. Now, if you guys recall, my client had really no sideburn area. She had no hair near the temple area. So I actually used some of the extension hair to create sideburns for her that are nice and secure. So even if the, ra if the rain, if the breeze blows, it's not gonna blow and expose her sides, okay? All of that has been covered and taken care of. And I also did add some of the different layers of protection in those two areas on both her sides because I knew I was gonna add a little bit of hair there. Now, even though I add the hair there, I'm still going to do my absolute best to make sure that it's still nice and flat and that it won't create a bulky head or make her head seem larger or wider than naturally um, her natural size. There we go. Now, behind the ear, I'm just using my shears just to cut and clean it up. Her nape area has already really been cut, so I don't really have to do much back there. The goal at this point is just to blend the extensions with her hair, her face shape, and just to get that style ready for us when it's time for us to curl her. Once we're done with the blending of the razor, I just blew off the excess hair using our Platinum Turbo Blow Dryer that will be available later this year. And then I'm gonna use my clippers just to take off a little bit of the weight 
at the nape area. And my clippers, I have the B guard on. I don't know what number a B is, but this is merely just to take off some of that weight that she has back there and to clean it up so that when we go to curl her, it is now seamless and everything just kind of melts into each other. Once I got finished with blending, I was just checking my cut just to make sure that everything was well. And then I'm gonna use our Elite Silk Wrap Foam to mold her hair and the extension hair together. And this is gonna give it that seamless look. No different from if you were doing a traditional pixie, you guys, you are going to be molded either way. So it's not like your, your quick weaves where we just go straight into curling, no. All of this really comes together at the mold. The mold is super important because it's gonna really create that illusion that all of this is your hair or that this hair has no seams to it. Now, after she's dried under the dryer, I'm just going through with my trimmers and just trimming behind the ear. You can also trim the front as well, but I like to keep the front nice and soft. So while I'm trimming the front, I'm not gonna be creating any hard lines. I'm really just gonna be creating sideburns as if it was her actual hair. You guys are gonna hear me say that a million times in this video because that is really the goal of what I'm doing. Now don't be afraid to use that razor and take off a lot of that bulkiness. And then I like to use my trimmers to carve out the sideburns, especially for clients that I'm creating sideburns for. And I do my sideburns the same way, even if it was your hair or the, the extension hair. I like to keep the sideburns slightly long, but not too long. And I also wanted to make sure that it was easy for her to maintain, even if the breeze blew, even if she was doing something um, or she slept bad that the sideburns would easily give her good coverage because her actual sideburns do go a lot lower. Once I got finished with the cutting and blending, I'm spraying her with a little bit of Sebastian Shaper and then I'm gonna start curling her with our new Smooth by EHC Mini Iron. This iron is actually not gonna be available until later this year towards the summer, but you are able to utilize our Smooth by EHC one inch iron or if your hair is a little bit longer, you could utilize our Smooth by EHC XL iron, which is a two inch iron. I kind of said this in the video before when I was doing my other client's alopecia weave. When I'm curling my clients who have situations such as hers, I like to do what we call diagonal curling because it creates that e, that cascade, that, that layage. It creates the softness, but it also helps to blend her hair and the extensions together and make it still very nice and soft. Um, I shouldn't put very, but still makes it nice and soft. This is just a technique that I learned over time. Now, of course, you can do your traditional curling if you want it more tight, but I don't like to see that line of demarcation between her hair and the extensions, which you are still going to see some, but I don't want it to be extremely noticeable or make it where it's going to be very hard for her to blend it herself when she is at home dealing with this. Now, when we are done, I'm just spraying her with a little bit of our goddess polish.
And then we're just going to blend her in using our flow comb, which on the flow comb, I'm using the small side and not the large side. And then I just took a little brush and just cleaned up the back area, made it nice and smooth. Now, whenever you have a client who has any form of rippling or anyone who has more like meat on their head, using your clippers and just cleaning up that area or taking out a lot of the density is going to create the illusion that they don't have any of that issue going on. And then, of course, you want to make sure that your edge line is as high as possible, but not too high. Where you begin to create an imaginary line and now you have given the person a chopped head. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video today. Please comment down below. Tell me what you guys thought about the finished product. Tell me what you guys thought about the blend and the style on her. I love the color on her as well. I feel like salt and pepper is great, but there's nothing wrong with having a little bit of regular color. So the next time we actually do her hair, we're going to add some blonde to this because she's used to having her blonde. And when she left out, she absolutely loved it, you guys. I did spray her with a little bit of Pump It Up just to make it super hard because she didn't want to have to do anything. But outside of that, everything else turned out good. Don't forget, you guys, to go ahead and hit that subscribe button and check out our website, EliteHairCareUSA.com and CrystalWOnline.com to shop our 50% off Easter sale as well as the $7 serum and curl definition gel sale. Bye!